This is the wonderful Artie Ganson with her talk, Walking My Black Dog, Dealing with Depression. Let me take you back to the 24th of March, 2011. I'd just finished high school the year before, and I was one of those prefects that declared themselves queen over the school. So when I got into uni, I was bright, optimistic, doing something that I'd always been passionate about, and I thought I'd go far. And I thought I was ready for any challenge that would be sent my way. But two weeks into my first semester, just after my 18th birthday, I get a call. She's dead. I hear her on the other line. What did you say to her? Was the follow-up question. Yes, I was the last person to see and talk to my best friend before she committed suicide. She was 16. But what did I say to her? What could I have done? Should I not have shuffled those papers? I had no idea where I was, what I was doing. I was so confused. And all these questions and accusations were in my head, and I couldn't shake them. Right then and there, I knew I'd met my black dog. Winston Churchill characterized his depression as a black dog. But I take it, I take the health of the black dog, showing how you deal with the difficulties in your life. Life can hand you the highest of highs and the lowest of lows, but it's about going and dealing with them in a healthy manner, and that's what I want to talk to you about today. Dealing with suicide and depression is not easy. Dealing with life in general might not be easy. I mean, there are dogs of all different shapes and sizes. People have their own challenges. But I want to share my experience and show you the importance of a support network and the importance of us all communicating more effectively about these issues. So like I said, different shapes and sizes, right? So for me, this was so new. I'm the kind of person that closes my eyes during Batman. I do not deal well with any sort of violence. So when this happened, I thought, I must be part of some movie. Yes, definitely a character in some script, and all I need to do is go through the script and I'll be over it. But it doesn't work like that. I went up to anyone and everyone willing to listen, just to gauge their reaction, just to understand more about how I should be feeling, like who I was now. People were supportive, but this changed over time. I would keep my black dog beside me as I'd go through work and uni, failing subjects, going to my internship for almost three days a week, or no sleep at all, yoga, dance, just to keep my mind off it. And of course, there's Facebook. That takes up a lot of time. But having so many different networks, paradoxically, made me feel so much more isolated. Because for every relationship that we have, there's a certain etiquette to it. And we have to maintain those relationships by maintaining that kind of facade. Everyone does it, but it becomes harder and harder as you present yourself as someone further and further from the truth. Everyone loves puppies. I know when I got my baby black dog, everyone was interested and willing to help me out. But a puppy's energy doesn't wane like everyone else's around me. So I started hearing things like, you're exaggerating. Oh, it's been a while now, shouldn't you be over it? I've gone through things so, many, so much more difficult than this. Everyone is different when it comes to grieving and other difficult life trials. So I started turning into myself. I couldn't look outwards anymore, because people were getting frustrated with the way this was affecting them. So when I turned to myself, ideas of self-harm and trying to justify what my friend did seemed more and more realistic to me. But I still didn't seek professional help, because I was getting comfortable with my dog. But when plants, animals and menacing faces started to talk to me, I knew that I needed someone else's help. 
I mean, where else are you supposed to take a sick dog apart from to the vet? But the people around me felt as if I disrespected them in some way, that their efforts to look after me weren't sufficient. And that was the truth. They had to accept it, and I needed professional help, and I was going to get it. And I did. Professional help helped me look inwards more healthily. And I think it made my life much, much better. I think the reason why it also took me so long to get professional help is that from a very young age, we're taught about the idea of independence, success, personal achievement, the happiness of the individual. But what I think we should be teaching our children as youth suicide rates go up worldwide is the idea of interdependence. We all need to understand our own value and the value of our experiences and put that forward to other people who might be in need of it. You don't realize, but each and every one of you is a key part of your own support network. And you have to be aware of that. But it comes at a little cost. It comes at the cost of perhaps your emotional stability. It can be challenging, but I urge you all to take the challenge. On a more practical level, if someone you know is not looking right today, don't say, oh, they might be better tomorrow. Go up to them, ask them, are you OK? But be ready for any response. You don't know what they'll say. Maybe they won't shrug you off this time. Maybe they might actually need your help. It's not only about who you talk to, but it's also about the way you communicate how you're feeling. I know a lot of people who say, oh, that was so difficult. I just feel like killing myself. Exaggeration, hyperbole, elements of humor. We all use it to dispel our fear and discomfort about things that might not seem close to our experience. But we never know. Things can change so quickly. And it's important to save words like this and phrases like this when you really need it. I know how difficult it is to communicate about these issues, not being able to be taken seriously when you say you want to do something to yourself is a handicap that people who already are experiencing such difficult times don't need. So I urge us all to use the vocab of depression, suicide, self-harm in ways that can empower the people who are suffering from them and taking it seriously because things can change so quickly. I mean, I feel like having this experience might put me slightly on, slightly on edge when I hear certain things, but I think overall it's helpful. My job currently is to go around to high schools and tell them about their tertiary options. So one time after a talk, two boys come up to me, and one of them says, my task is so over overwhelming, I just want to end it all. Of course, I slipped out. I told him, all the things about aspiring to long-term goals, trying to calm him down. But he was also chuckling alongside it. I don't think he could believe that I'd take him so seriously. I even asked his friend, is he joking? But it didn't really matter to me. I was going to give him a spiel anyway. But I can remember those two boys were walking away. They kept giggling, saying, I think she nearly cried. <laughs> but it shows that in our education system, we use these words in a way that they're not supposed to be used. And even in work, during our daily lives, if you have difficulty, express yourself more effectively by saying, what exactly is going wrong? What exactly is giving you difficulty? Because words to do with self-harm, suicide, mental illness and depression, I would say save them for the people that really need it because they need to be taken seriously when they can actually pluck up the courage and ask for help. Life gives you trials. It can give you the highs of highs and the lows of lows, but it's about going through both healthily. More recently, someone very important to me left my life, and I had a dream. Off into the distance, there was a white dog. 
it wanted to play in the river, but I called it back. I said, no, you can't. Next second, under my left arm, I saw a beautiful black dog with a shiny coat. Yes, I get prophetic dreams. Um, and I think it just shows that you can go through difficulties healthily. And sharing your experience is also important. It's not something that you can learn through literature or through movies. It's something human that needs to be shared. But I don't feel like my black dog would have such a shiny coat if it wasn't for my support network and learning to communicate effectively and getting help when I needed it, when I need it. And I urge everyone to go out and make sure that everyone around you is feeling good, has a reason to feel good. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, Adi Gennison.